have a prenuptial agreement. All right. Should a Christian couple have a prenuptial agreement? Should Christian couple have anything like that? All right. Hmm. Welcome to Pastor O'Neill's Review Zone podcast. We are glad that you decided to join us today. This podcast focuses on reviewing topics like movies, music videos, audio clips, and even relationships. So sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to Pastor O'Neill's Review Zone. It's something that we need to think about. Should a Christian couple have a prenuptial agreement? All right. So while we are talking about this entire issue, all right, while we are talking about this entire issue, uh, we want to pause here for a little bit and uh, we want to go into um, our sponsor for today. All right. So we want to stop there and we want to go into our sponsor for today, which is O'Neill Tees. Are you tired of wearing the same old boring clothes every day? Do you want to express your personality through your fashion choices? Look no further than O'Neill Tees, the brand new print on demand business initiated by Desport O'Neill. At O'Neill Tees, we offer a wide variety of products to choose from, including classic t shirts, hoodies, tank tops for ladies, mugs, exercise mats, and phone cases. And the best part? You can customize them with your own unique designs. Whether you want to showcase your favorite hobby, support your favorite sports team, or show off your love for your furry friend, O'Neill Tees has got you covered. And with our high quality printing process, your designs will look vibrant and last for a long time. And the best part? You don't have to wait weeks for your order to arrive. Our print on demand process ensures that your product is printed and shipped to you quickly and efficiently. So what are you waiting for? Visit O'Neill Tees today and start designing your own custom clothing and accessories. With our wide range of products and easy to use design tools, the possibilities are endless. Plus, our commitment to customer satisfaction means that you can shop with confidence, knowing that we'll do everything we can to make sure you're happy with your order. O'Neill Tees, the perfect choice for anyone who wants to stand out from the crowd. Order now and experience the O'Neill Tees difference, just click the link in the description. There we are, have it. Um, our sponsor for today, O'Neill Tees. We print t shirts. Uh, we have the word of God printed on these t shirts that um, gives you a sense of encouragement, um, a sense of, of pride wearing these t shirts, knowing you know what you stand for, amen, and, and who you are. Light up the room, change the very atmosphere that you walk into uh, uh, in the room, and so on with our. Uh, brand name or or real brand t-shirts from O'Neill Tees. All right. So let's get back into the topic, um, prenuptial agreements. Question was asking, should, Chris, should a Christian couple have a prenuptial agreement? Well, many ministers of the gospel will say no, and many believers would even scoff at the idea. I have been a pastor for far too long. All right. People will say no, Christians have no dealing with that. Some people say, well, you shouldn't have that. But the question you need to ask yourself, do Christian marriages break up? That's the question you need to ask yourself. If we say that believers should not have a prenuptial agreement, which talks about how assets, fixed and liquid assets, should be dispensed, how children who gets custody of the children, uh, custody of the dogs, uh, different properties around the world, if you have that sort of thing, how it's supposed to be uh, dispensed with or dispersed with and so on. If you say that as Christians, we should not have that question being now, do Christian marriages end in divorce? Do we have that? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. We have prominent people that have ended in divorce. Juanita Bynum comes to mind. Uh, we have prominent Christians uh, that, 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 have, that have separated. Um, Paula White is our next example. Uh, we have prominent people that have, that have had uh, uh, breakups and, 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 and so on. All right. And once we have, once we have 
that you see we must understand my brothers and my sisters is that we are not living in a perfect society god's word is perfect god is perfect but we are not and we enter into relationships with the best of intentions we enter in with the the best of 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 of, of our hearts and all of that but life is not perfect all right life is not perfect and we do have some really bad breakups and fallouts in christian marriages and only when this happens and and divorce is now on the table that we have people getting really really scared that things get really really scary because the whole matter of the uh the disbursement of assets and funds and even custody of children as we are saying now come um to be brought into the force the forefront all right uh, that, that that whole issue now comes to the forefront and now we are faced with the issue now what do i do now you're scrambling for lawyer now you're scrambling for advice now um some some in some cases as, as sad as it might seem it plays out even on social media because people like some people like to air uh, the dirty laundry in public i don't know why but some people just love to all right and 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 they they, they get into uh the whole issue and and, and so on all right so we are not in a perfect society we are not perfect either we are born in sin and shape in iniquity we are not perfect either so then should we as believers get a prenuptial agreement well first and foremost scripture emphasizes the importance of trust love and selflessness within the marital relationship all right the scripture emphasizes the importance of love selflessness selflessness and trust in the marital relationship let's have a look at ephesians chapter number five and verse 25 ephesians 5 5 25 the apostle paul is writing to the ephesian church and he says husbands love your wives as christ loved the church and gave himself up for her so we as men have a real awesome a, a real serious task here he says husbands men love your wives as christ loves the church how does christ love the church is the church perfect not by any stretch of the imagination the church makes a lot of mistakes and the world is quick to call us out on it the world is very very quick to tell us uh, about things but one of the things that we must be able to to to, to how to say uh one of the things that we must be able to communicate to the world is that we are not perfect we are only sinners that are saved by grace sin still affects us and that's why the bible says if we say we have no sin we make god a liar although we are christians right so christians aren't sinless we just sin less <laughs> all right we're not sinless we just sin less right so we as men have have the charge we have to lead by loving our wives as christ loved the church and gave himself up for it how many men today are willing to give their lives for their wives and time and situations is what does really bring that to the forefront all right the sacrificial love calls us to prioritize the well-being of our spouse above personal possessions or financial security let me say that again the sacri this sacrificial love calls for us to prioritize the well-being of our spouse above personal possessions or financial security all right so now so now 
the question is you let's let's paint a scenario you are a christian man age doesn't matter at this point right and you have amassed you have worked hard and you have amassed a substantial amount of both liquid and fixed assets so there's a top earner in the society it's a top income earner in the society all right you are what is is, is commonly referred to as a, a high value man all right you have worked hard you have amassed that and now you are interested in a young lady the young lady does not have anywhere close to what you have but she loves you does she love you for the money that's another thing to talk about we're not reaching there yet but the fact is you love her and before you get into marriage now before you get into marriage the thing is are you going to let her sign a prenuptial agreement that talks about all right all of that now some people will say well the fact is if the woman is a stay-at-home mom and she's taking care of the kids while you are out there working then of course she is entitled uh to some sort of thing because she is working all right she is definitely working because if she is not working then you would have had to pay for a babysitter a nanny uh, or a, 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 a caretaker of some sort to take care of the kids and in that case now then the, the the wife would have been working all right so in either way finances are coming out all right finances are coming out so we need to look at a few things here we need to look at a few things ultimately we should remember that marriage is a journey of unity where two individuals come together, committed to God and each other. Well, hopefully they're committed to God. All right. Um, the Bible says what fellowship has light with darkness. As a believer, you should not seek to, to, to get married to an unbeliever. If both parties are unbelievers and one party gets saved, then according to first corinthians chapter 7 somewhere there about the unbelieving spouse is sanctified by the believing spouse all right and and so where two individuals come together committed to god and each other so while prenuptial agreements may provide legal protection their existence should not overshadow the covenantal nature of marriage and really it doesn't what a prenuptial agreement is or does is that it protects or it, it it speaks about the disbursement of the assets as i said both liquid and fixed and the children and and, and, and so on uh dogs and animal livestock and so on uh in the event of a split all right and really does not and should not overshadow the covenantal nature of the marriage prioritizing communication trust and biblical understanding of, of love will lay a solid foundation for a Christ-centered relationship. Prioritizing communication, trust, and a biblical understanding of love will lay a solid foundation for a Christ-centered relationship. All right? So um, all of that, all of that really, really helps really really helps us right it really really helps us so let's let's look at let's look at another thing here right within the whole marriage relationship let's 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 look at at another thing here all right and the thing is are we in a perfect society are we in a perfect society the reality is people change as they grow. And as people grow, some people recognize that uh, where they, 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 they used to be, right? They don't want to be there anymore. 
let's have a look at something right a comment that jesus christ made to the scribes and the pharisees and it's found in matthew chapter number 19 verses 7 to 11. here's what it says they say unto him why did moses then command to give a writing of divorce and to put the wife away and he says to them moses because of the hardness of your hearts allowed you to divorce your wives but from the beginning it was not so so god did not or it is not god's plan for people to separate it's not the plan for husband and wife to separate. That was not his plan. But because of the hardness of your hearts. And what? how does the hardness of the heart occur? Because of sin. Remember, we talked about sin the last time in our last episode. All right? The hardness of heart comes in because of sin. And so, whosoever shall put away his wife, Jesus Christ says, except it be for fornication and shall marry another commits adultery and whoso marrieth her which is put away also commits adultery and his disciples say unto him verse 10 if that is the case right if that is the if, if this is the case of the man be so with his wife it is not good to get married I think that what Jesus Christ was actually pointing at here is the seriousness of marriage. Not like what we have today. People get married today and by next week they're divorced already. You know? Some women taking ever half or if not all that you have. Taking custody of the children, requiring um, child, um, child support and all of that on top of what they have. And they came in with nothing. That speaks about the hardness of the heart. Some people actually go into marriage with individuals knowing that they can divorce at any time, not signing any prenuptial agreement, knowing very well and, 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 and all of that. Are these Christians? I would not like to think so. But does this happen in Christian marriages? Yes, it does. We might not like to say it doesn't, but the fact is it does. All right. And so we must really um, protect ourselves. All right. As I said before, do we live in a perfect society? The answer is no. Do people, even Christians, separate or can no longer with, live with each other? The answer is yes. And therefore, we should exercise wisdom and caution, especially when it comes to marriage. That's why the disciples saying, well, if that is the case, it's better we don't get married at all. But before you even enter into marriage, it is something that we must be very uh, careful about. When it comes to marriage, the marriage vows highlights that marriage is commended and honorable among all. This is what the, the, the marriage vow we as pastors when we when we you have the husband and wife standing before the altar this is something that 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 we, we charge them with it says that the marriage vows highlights and i quote marriage is commended and honorable among all and it's not to be entered into unadvisedly it means that if you are deciding to get married both both male and female should seek proper counsel I would advise from your pastor, from your church leader, your youth leader, whoever that has an understanding of what, 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 what real marriage is about. You should not enter into unadvisedly or lightly. You see somebody and you find they look beautiful. You find she have a nice hourglass figure and you want to get married to her. You're saying wifey material and all that. Listen, all that glitters is not gold. And you should not base getting married to somebody just based on pure looks. Should not get involved or get married to somebody based on finances. Even the quote-unquote high-value men, they might have plenty money. They can pay for trips to Paris, London, England, uh, Curacao, wherever. 
but what about their personality what about uh what about their 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 love what about their stance with god how do they how do they treat women do they respect women so it is it, much more than money and I, i'm going to share some clips with us that will, will, will blow you away concerning how some people think when it comes to, to, to the marriage especially women and men so i'm not going to paint either sex bad it's on both sides so we must not get into the marriage unadvisedly lightly but reverently discreetly advisedly so it means you must you you, you must be meticulous about this thing you must be sober you know, it's one of these crazy shows where um, these friends, they, 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 they went for, you know, a, a, what is called a, bachelor, a bachelor day. And then one person wake up and find that they're married and say, what? Listen, listen. Craziness. That should not ever be you. All right? And above all, you should fear God above all. 